All right, man, peace. You know, brothers, the NBA Finals matchups have been constant permutations of the same four players. LeBron James, Kevin Durant, Stephen Curry, Kawhi Leonard. And at various points over the last seven or eight years, one of those four players has been considered arguably the best player in the NBA. As of right now, it is Kawhi Leonard's turn. For the remainder of the offseason, Kawhi Leonard will be considered the best player in the NBA heading into next season. Of course, many of LeBron James's fanboys scattered throughout the NBA media are going to hope that he can execute some type of resurgence. But as of right now, it is Kawhi Leonard's time. So is he actually the best player in the NBA? Of course, they're going to talk about it, and I'm going to chime in. A lot of people were doubting me. Um, you know, thought I was um, either faking an injury or didn't want to play for a team. Shots fired at Skip Bayless. And that was, that was disappointing to me that uh, that was all in the media because I love the game of basketball. You know, just just to be able to win this championship this year is just something special for me because, you know, I'm happy for you, brother. The last year, everybody was looking at me and I stayed true to myself and I had a great support system. And once I got here to Toronto, they understood everything and the move kept moving from there. Now, brothers, you see how the super liberal sports media or the mainstream super liberal sports media is now pretty much issuing mea culpas to Kawhi Leonard in the aftermath of him believing in himself or sticking to his guns. That's why it's so important that you do that, because these people are willy nilly. They're flimsy. They're like leaves blowing in the wind. They concoct and create these false narratives to see who they can get to respond and react to their bullshit. And if you just stay the course and stay focused on what you need to be focused on, they are going to have to apologize because most of these people. They don't even know what their own life is about, much less being able to tell another person what they should be thinking and what they should be doing. That's why they're so frustrated with Kawhi Leonard, because as they say, he quote unquote doesn't let them in. What that really means is that he views himself as someone who actually has the nerve to have priorities. And the media is not his first priority. He's not even on social media. So you already know that it's going to be very difficult for the media to dictate things to him through social media, which is a portal into the you know into the mind of many of these athletes they open themselves up too much and then they get manipulated because that's what happens to people who are too open victorious welcome back to first take here in oakland thank you so much for being with us this morning and huge congrats to the raptors they are world champions brian winhorse in the building how are we doing Wendy? i want to start with you on this one so Kawhi becomes only the third player to win finals mvp with two different teams joining who lebron james and kareem abdul jabbar you know it would be very interesting if Kawhi leonard were to leave the raptors and sign with the clippers if he were to win the championship on the clippers next season how do we evaluate him <laughs> you know in regards to being an all-time great It'd be like you can't even look at his stats and compare him to any of the other all time greats because the sample size will be too small. But if he were to go win a championship on the L.A. Clippers, a moribund franchise who has never really won anything, I'm not even quite sure if they've ever reached the Western Conference final round. If he were to do that with them, now all of a sudden he probably becomes the weirdest great player in the history of American major team sports. And when I say weird, I mean from the standpoint of where do you put him in the hierarchy? He'd become the only NBA player to win NBA championships on three different teams. Undoubtedly, he would be the MVP in the NBA Finals for the LA Clippers. But stat-wise, he probably has what, career-wise? About 8,000 points? Like, <laughs> you'd be looking at him like, what do we do with this dude? He'd become like the, the basketball version of Sandy Koufax. Beautiful company to be in. Let me ask you this. Is he the best player in the world right now? As of right now, he is. It's very much akin to Akeem Olajuwon after he was able to win back-to-back -back championships. When they defeated the, the Orlando Magic in the 1995 NBA Finals, he was considered the best player in the NBA, even though Michael Jordan had come back. And heading into the next season, he was still considered the best player in the NBA pretty much through the first two months until the Bulls started to do historic things and to show that they were that they were going to break barriers 
historically that they were eventually going to win 70 plus games which they ended up doing but early on in that 1995-1996 season Hakeem Olajuwon was still considered the best player in the NBA heading into the 2019-2020 season Kawhi Leonard will be considered the best player in the NBA or at least he should be with the incumbent LeBron James trying to regain his throne I don't know if he is right now because we've got so many guys injured but he will now go down in history as a giant killer he slayed the Miami Heat when they were on a two-time run probably should have been three times but it was two-time run with an MVP performance back in 2014 and then last night and it wasn't just about last night it was about the whole playoffs and the whole series mm -hmm. he slayed the, the Golden State Warriors uh, outplayed everybody on the Warriors team for especially those first four games and takes down another two-time champion um, comes into Toronto and I loved seeing his emotion last night he let his guard down a little bit he was very candid after the game as candid as we've heard from him all year about his issues coming off his injury last year and at the end of the day he's got two finals MVP trophies with two different teams and two different conferences and that's not something that's ever been done and something else I want to point out he led the entire playoffs in points rebounds and steals that hasn't been done since Larry Bird in 1984 it was a Wow. A great postseason for Kawhi Leonard. Of course Kawhi Leonard is the best player in basketball, and it's about time people recognize it. He was the best. I have to give you credit, so you were ahead of the curve on that one. Max Kellerman has been saying that Kawhi Leonard is arguably the best player in the NBA for the last three or four years now. With a healthy KD, clearly Golden State would have won it. People would have mistakenly called KD better than Kawhi. Just like with a healthy KD, clearly they destroyed the Cavs last year. People, Some people mistakenly called KD better than LeBron. LeBron has the postseason to remind us that he's the best in the game usually because he, he you know, plays it safe during the regular season, takes his foot off the gas, doesn't spend himself because he knows the postseason's where it's at. Let me say this very quickly. It would be the NBA's dream for Kawhi Leonard to remain with Toronto and to square off against the LA Lakers in next year's NBA Finals so that we can finally discern who is truly the best player in the NBA next season. With no KD out there and with Steph Curry being the fourth best player but there being a clear gap between him and the top three, the NBA would love to see the Toronto Raptors against the LA Lakers in the Finals next year. He didn't make the playoffs this year. We won't see him again until the playoffs. He was almost 36 years old. Who knows? So the, the title's vacant. That's what I said to start the playoffs. Baton is down. Who wants to pick it up? Kawhi. Remember what he did against Philadelphia? Anyone remember the last shot, let alone the series? Remember what he then did to the Greek freak who I thought was going to prove himself the best player in the game? A physical mismatch. And then what he just did to the Golden State Warriors. The most points scored in a single postseason ever? MJ1, LeBron 2, Kawhi 3. Wendy just brought it up. MV... Wait a minute, you mean to tell me that Kawhi Leonard scored more points in a single postseason than Kobe Bean? Get the hell out of here. From what the Kobe Bean Bryant fans tell me, <laughs> Kobe's greater and more clutch than Kawhi Leonard has been at any point in his career. That's interesting. Two set finals MVPs, two set franchises, Kareem, LeBron, now Kawhi. You know who the three greatest players in the modern era are? MJ, Kareem, and LeBron. And Kawhi finds himself... Uh, no, not quite. The greatest players of the modern era are Michael Jordan, Kareem, Magic, and Larry Bird. LeBron will be somewhere after them. At one time, I had LeBron James as number six on my all-time list, but with the last two seasons, or really this last season, and then his NBA Finals flame out back in the 2018 when he claimed that broken his hand, and he, after game four, he came out with his wife's scarf wrapped around his hand. I'm not quite sure if I can have him as high as number six anymore. I can't put him above players like Shaq and, and Hakeem and Tim Duncan and Will Chamberlain. So I probably have to have LeBron down somewhere in that eight or nine range, you know, somewhere around there. But I, I can't, I definitely cannot say that LeBron is the third best player of the modern era. No. Lists with those kind of names. Larry Bird is right there with those kind of names. Everyone always likes to talk about defense. They play lips, pay lip service to it. I agree. As a kid, they told me Julio Cesar Chavez and Mike Tyson were the best pound for pound in the world. I saw this guy, Pernell Whitaker. I said, well, no one can hit him. Everyone, Felix Trinidad, shame over about Floyd Mayweather. No one can hit him. Kawhi plays defense like he's Pernell Whitaker or Floyd Mayweather, but...
but now his offense is almost as good as anyone's in the game. Let me tell you something else finally. If Kawhi Leonard goes to the Clippers, you heard it here first. The Clippers are winning the NBA title next season. Oh. Wait, 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 wait. What if AD first. What if AD goes to the Lakers? If Kawhi goes to the Clippers, the Clippers are your NBA champions. Stop right next there. Stop right there. Year. I have a question. Are you saying if Kawhi Leonard goes by himself or with somebody? If they keep the team more or less as it is, the, the pieces, and Kawhi joins by himself as the only superstar, he will do with the Clippers what he just did with the Raptors. Okay, I just wanted to make sure. Um, <clears throat> before, before I get into answering that question about the best player in the world, mm -hmm. whether or not that's Kawhi, I want to say this. I feel very, very sorry for the Philadelphia 76ers because, right. my God, could you imagine? I mean, Kawhi was standing in their way. You got to remember, the Sixers... Uh, blew the Raptors out in two games in that series, forced the game seven, and, uh, 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 you know, the shot by Kawhi, it bounced and bounced and bounced before it. The Sixers, just from a, a physical aspect, they have the most natural talent of any team in the NBA. I think that there were at least two teams out of the Eastern Conference that would have beaten a Kevin Durant-less Golden State Warriors team because I think that the Sixers would have beaten them as well. And really, the Bucks probably would have beaten them also. I just don't think that this was the Golden State Warriors season. Now, had Klay Thompson stayed fully healthy, should the Golden State Warriors have won the finals against any one of those top three teams, would I have been surprised? No. But I would have picked any one of those top three teams to beat the Warriors without Kevin Durant. And ultimately derailed the Sixers because the Sixers, I'm telling you, somebody that covers the Sixers has been in that locker room. They wanted Milwaukee and they believed they could have beat Milwaukee and we see what could have happened to Golden State if you got a collection of talent that you got to deal with. So I feel sorry for the Sixers in that. That shot was so difficult. Kawhi was, <laughs> Kawhi was running for that right corner at top speed and just stopped on a dime and shot a fadeaway three-point shot or borderline three-point shot over Joel Embiid who's arguably the, the best defender at his position in the NBA. Great shot. Number one. Number two, I also want to say this is a bad day for the San Antonio Spurs. And it's a bad day for the San Antonio Spurs because of Kawhi Leonard's post-game comments. You have to remember when Kawhi Leonard is alluding to quote unquote people not believing in me etc think about this you can talk to media all you want to all the media did was report yeah what was going on inside he that locker room they well hold up Stephen A. Smith not only were you just reporting you were on the bandwagon of people who believed that Kawhi Leonard was faking his injury so that he could leave the San Antonio Spurs you were one of those people diagnosed his injury yes. remember not just misdiagnosis also tony park and other players right. and not only that the belief is that they would not have ever approached him had it not been by you know with greg popovich giving the okay etc so of course he declared the cold red i mean come on don't know what the truth is in fairness to the san antonio spurs but Kawhi leonard being as candid as he was in that post game this is it's a bad day for the San Antonio Spurs because not only did you lose him, he basically told you why. You didn't believe in him as a person. It's a bad situation for any organization to be in with a superstar because you never know how that can affect things moving forward in the future. Now, as it pertains to the best player, Kawhi Leonard to me is not the best player in the world. Kawhi Leonard is one of the best players in the world. But to me, I'm not ready to say he's better than LeBron. I damn sure ain't ready to say he's better than Kevin Durant. Well, as of right now, and I understand, I mean... Whenever you've been with someone or accustomed to a certain state of being for a long period of time, it's difficult for you to let it go. So LeBron has widely been considered the best player in the NBA for 10 years now. Even though Kobe Bryant fans will say otherwise, LeBron has been considered the best player in the NBA for about 10 years now. But it's very difficult for me to put him above Kawhi, especially since Kawhi beat him head to head. And he's also beaten the team that beat LeBron's team. So... I have to have Kawhi as my number one heading into next season. He's just as good an offensive player as LeBron is, and he's about a five times better defensive player than LeBron James is. Those are just the facts.
even ready to say he's better than Anthony Davis. I don't feel that way. Well, look, Durant's not going to play next year. No, 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 no. I'm just, no, no, no. I'm just talking about when we say, like, what, what Wendy said when he started off his comments by saying he doesn't know because of the injuries. We're not talking well, about what I'm saying is the injuries. Yeah, you're yeah, talking no, about no, a 32-year-old no, 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 by the time he comes back. That's what you're talking about. I'm talking now. That's what you're talking about. I am Right, but at the end of the day, you do have to hearken unto what Max Kellman is saying because Kevin Durant's not going to be there next year. And besides that, even though I'm expecting a full recovery, we don't know what Katie's going to look like when he comes back. You, I'm only looking at talent. I'm not thinking about next year. I'm not, I understand the injuries when KD might be out. I get all of that. I'm just talking about looking at you right now today. When you analyze somebody's talent and skill set, I don't view Kawhi Leonard as the definitive best in the world. I think LeBron has something to say about that. I think KD, from a talent perspective, has something to say about that. I damn sure think Anthony Davis has something to say about that. Somebody has to help me. What the hell has Anthony Davis ever done as a leader for people to, to put him and mention him as arguably the best player in the NBA? Right now, just from a stat perspective, he's historically great stat-wise. You're talking about a guy who gives you 26, 27 points a game, 13, 14 rebounds, three blocks, five assists, shoots 75% from the free throw line and 35% from the three-point line. I get all that. But how has that resulted in winning? He won his first playoff series in last year's playoffs, in the 2018 playoffs, and then comes back around and quits on his team. A team that had every bit the amount of talent as Giannis Antetokounmpo's team. Now Giannis' team won 60 games in the Eastern Conference. So even if you want to say, well, it's in, it's in the West. But still, even in the West, with the talent that he had with Drew Holiday and a lot of those guys on the squad, they should have won at least 53, 54 games this year if he would have had his head screwed on straight. So I, I cannot put Anthony Davis in the, in the conversation for best player in the NBA. No way in hell. And have him above Kawhi? Man, you out of your damn mind? I let it is spectacular. He is a superstar. He's a two-time champion, a two-time NBA Finals MVP. I'm not taking anything away from him. But when I think of the skill sets and the talent that it requires, you doing what you do, also making dudes better, playing on both ends of the floor, which obviously is what makes Kawhi Leonard in that conversation. Those three names that I gave you, I think a legitimate argument can be made that all of them can be ahead of Kawhi. I think a legitimate argument can be made that your hairline is affecting your understanding of the game of basketball. Because as that shit is drifting back, so is your understanding of what the hell you're talking about. I mean, there's no disrespect, Steve A. Smith. For you to say that Anthony Davis is in the conversation for best player in the NBA ahead of Kawhi Leonard, what the hell has he ever done? I mean, give me a break. I was this postseason, believe it or not, the numbers show that LeBron was better last postseason. Oh yeah, no, wait, And I granted that the East wasn't as strong, well, LeBron did win two game sevens last year, including one on the road. So I don't not say. Well, let's be clear, as Stephen A. Smith would say. LeBron James' 2018 playoff campaign was historically great. Like, that shit was Jordan esque. Averaging 34, 8, and 8. That's, that's going back to, like, some of Jordan's playoff campaigns in the early 90s, late 80s. All that's well and good. But to say that the East was not as strong last year as it is this year is a drastic understatement. A drastic understatement, as I've, as I've stated repeatedly. One can make the case that the top four teams in the Eastern Conference playoffs, had any one of them made the finals, that they could have defeated Golden State. Even Boston. Even Boston. Boston's problem was there was no way that they were going to be able to run the gamut of all the great teams in the Eastern Conference with the chemistry issues that they had. But Toronto, Philadelphia, Milwaukee, and this Boston team, with, just with the talent, they all would have beaten that Cleveland team last year. People forget Cleveland won seven games with the Indiana Pacers in the first round. Like, they should have lost that series. <laughs> I mean, give me a break. I would love to have seen, I would love to have seen the LeBron James from the 2018 playoffs square off against the Toronto Raptors of this year's playoffs. I think that would have been a sweep, honestly. Just from the impact of Kawhi being a calming force on their team, of course, LeBron is going to get his numbers because that's what he does. Even with Kawhi guarding him, LeBron is going to get his numbers. But the level of stress and consternation would have been severely diminished amongst Kawhi's teammates with the understanding that at least now we have a guy who can nullify LeBron because that's what you want. Whenever you have a player who can nullify LeBron, and there's only two players in the league who can do that, that being Kawhi and KD, 
that sets the rest of your team at ease to just do what they do, which is play team basketball. And a team that plays team basketball is going to beat a LeBron James team as long as you have that player who can offset LeBron. As long as you have that, because LeBron James' teams always lose to teams that play great team basketball and have a high team basketball IQ. I today is better than LeBron last year. I'm not saying that KD may not have continued this upward trajectory and he's a more transcendent talent. I mean, I'm talking not about what might be. Brother, I'm talking about what is. LeBron was that last year. We do not know what he is right now or next year. KD is hurt. He's out. When I say that look, he's not the transcendent physical talent maybe that AD or Giannis is, but he is in his prime both ways. I can't I'm not even sure about that because I saw some spring in Kawhi where he was dunking over players with the left hand and he had knee issues and, and quad issues. So, I mean, with an off season to heal, do his plow metrics, get his base back strong, hopefully come back next year. Kawhi is a great athlete. He's just not, <laughs> he's not a charismatic athlete. He's not fun to watch because he's not graceful. He's, he's, in his and hold he's not fun to watch from an aesthetic perspective. I enjoy watching him play though second the Clippers next year if he goes there mm -hmm. if LeBron and AD get together they're gonna have to strip everything down to get those two together it's gonna take them a year to put it all together they'll contend I'm talking about a win a chip the Warriors ain't gonna do it next year no KD no Clay. we've seen how far Houston can go that's about it that team that team the Clippers is a well-rounded, well-coached, really yeah. good team, missing an MVP. We know Stephen that. A. Stephen A. gets the last word. I cannot, I cannot believe you're going to make me say this, but just because he got injured and missed 17 straight games and ultimately it led to them missing the playoffs doesn't mean that we have a license to engage in amnesia and forget exactly what LeBron James brings to the table. Stephen A. Smith, I have news for you. One day LeBron James is going to fall off. He's not going to be averaging 27, 8, and 8 until he's 50 years old. He is going to fall off. We saw signs of it last season. So we'll see. I expect LeBron to put up somewhere in the range of 24 to 26 points a game. I do think that his PPG is going to fall in an attempt to defer to Anthony Davis. I think that he'll still probably average around 7.5 to 8.5 assists and rebounds per game. Maybe he'll put up a bit more of an effort defensively. I understand where Max Kellerman is coming from and his expectations of the Lakers for next year, but I'm waiting to see if they're going to be able to sign another big-name free agent or top-notch free agent. If they can get a Jimmy Butler, they're going to be a serious problem because with Jimmy Butler, LeBron, Kyle Kuzma, and Anthony Davis, I would expect that team to win a championship. Your team not making the playoffs doesn't relegate you to being a scrub, particularly when you spend, and I know you didn't say he's a scrub, but I'm just saying, the man went to eight straight NBA finals. The reality of the situation is he just finished averaging 27 a game. I think LeBron James was on course to be the league MVP had he not gotten hurt. And I well, you're a damn fool then, because there's nowhere in the world that LeBron James was going to defeat James Harden or Giannis in the MVP race. No way in hell. He'll be the MVP next year. So guess what? I'm not ready to sit up there and tell you that Kawhi Leonard is better than him. And recently is the beginning of this season. LeBron James is the only player in the NBA who these mainstream super liberal NBA media pundits consistently predict is going to win some type of MVP award the next season and he never does it. They've been predicting this since 2013 since his last mvp award and he has not won an mvp award in six years and they keep predicting that he's going to win an mvp award his mvp award winning days are over they're over saying lebron is worth any two mvp caliber players i didn't think anyone was close to lebron the last six or seven years. oakland tell them it's time for a commercial now, about them, about now. they're too into this debate did you hear oakland they're telling you it's not a bad debate but once again, LeBron's MVP winning days are over. Unless there's such a dearth of superstar level players next year. Let's say, for example, if Kawhi gets dinged up or Giannis gets dinged up or James Harden and the Houston Rockets, they have such bad chemistry issues that, who knows, maybe that team implodes. Who the hell knows? But a lot of players are going to have to fall by the wayside. And you look at Steph Curry. He's going to be in a great position to make a regular season MVP run next year. 
if he somehow could lead that team to 50, 51 wins and average 31 points a game, he's definitely going to challenge for that MVP award because he's going to be in a great position to do it. He's going to have all the shots that he wants. The only question is, are they going to be able to bring in another player who could take some heat off of him offensively? But anyway, peace.